So if you've been looking at my Snapchat recently, you might've seen that I've been getting into 3D hand tracking. And you could probably see that by all of the hand filters that I've created. I love creating nail art now and hand accessories like rings and wrist jewelry, as well as things that float around the hand. I feel like it's just really fun to see something on the front and back camera as well. So when you're trying on hand effects with makeup, you could take a picture like this or like this or have your hands in the scene with these cool nails and stuff. But when you flip the camera and you're taking videos of the world around you, you could also look at your hand and try out those nails as well or that hand jewelry that way, which just adds something fun. It's I just feel like another layer to adding to your makeup looks to add something with hands. It just, I don't know, it's really fun. So I started working with that a couple of months ago and pretty much every effect I've created now, I've started to add some sort of jewelry or effect to the hand. Um, and I find that people really like to play around with that and it's, it's pretty cool. So I created a template to work inside Lens Studio for um, rings and nails so that you can get started if you wanted to also create hand jewelry. So I'm going to give you guys a little tutorial of how I worked with Blender to create these um, rings and kind of like put them on the hand and then how I brought it into Lens Studio and set it up with a hand tracking template. So let's jump in. This is a 3D hand tracking workshop so I'm going to teach you how to use a 3D hand tracking template and how to bring your own objects into Blend Studio and put them on your hands. So right now we could see that with this template, the 3D hand tracking template, which is available in Blend Studio, um, it already has some stuff set up for you to test out and try on. So up here in the camera on the left hand side of the screen in the objects, um, we see our frog hands and just under that is skeleton 3D hands and default 3D hands. If you toggle these on and off, you could see the hands changing to the template. So now we have our 3D hands. So I'm actually going to show you that you could actually export this 3D hand and import it into Blender, and then you could add your accessories on top of it, which makes it so easy for putting objects on the hand and making sure it fits and everything. So you can see it fits pretty nicely, and so it, it warps my hand pretty well. Um, so right here, under here, you could see we have our right hand model, and if I check that on and off, um, yeah, so that's, this is the hand. Before I do that, I'm just gonna show you that um, right here is where we see our bones being connected and our attachment points. So these are all the attachment points. You can see there are many different bones and you actually don't need to connect each one individually. There's a shortcut for that. But we'll jump into that after. So to get the hand out of Lens Studio and into Blender, what you're gonna do is go to resources and search for right hand model. And so right here we have the right hand model. So first you're gonna have to save your file. And so now that the file is saved, you have all these files in a project folder somewhere. So now it'll allow you to export this particular object and save it somewhere else, like save it to a desktop. This is the hand now imported right into Blender. You can see all the bones are set up. And if you don't see the bones when you import it, all you have to do is go and you could turn off your, your viewport display. Front. Okay, so by clicking on the bones and then I could turn on and off the viewport display and hide the bones or I could show them so that you could see exactly where you are. I always like to be able to see where they are but it does make it look a little bit more messy um, and you could see that when we switch into pose mode and you move any of these bones, my objects are connected to the exact bone that I want it to be connected to. So I'll just show you quickly how to connect your objects. So what you're gonna do is just go back to object mode, click on your object, then click the bone, then go to object parent with automatic weights, and now it'll be linked to that bone. And so yeah, that's that's really it. So say we wanted to add something new, like you go and add a new object, and then you could just link it, put it, place it wherever you want on the hand, and then attach to that bone by parenting it. So now when you're done and you have all your objects set up and everything's working properly, you just want to make sure first to check in pose mode to make sure that the bone is making it move the way you want it and some other bone is not. And so in the full tutorial, I'll go through all the details of how to make sure it's as clean as possible. And also make sure that it's in this exact placement when you export it. So you want it to be exactly where it was when you imported it and not somewhere else, not scaled larger. So that way it makes it very easy to sync up inside Lens Studio. So now I'm gonna go and go to File and Export and you're just gonna save as an FBX and you could use all of the 
all the basic um, settings that are here, except you just won't, don't really need the camera or the light. And once it's saved, you're going to go back into Lens Studio. And now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it right under that square where it says right so that it goes directly underneath it. And you want to make sure that it goes directly underneath it because if it's not, it might change the sizing of it and just make it another couple of more steps. So that are, that's annoying to try to sort out. So I'm just going to delete the light and camera because it shouldn't be there. I'm going to delete the right hand model. And now all I have is my object underneath right. And so what you'll see is when you lift your hand is that it's there, but it's not linked up yet. So how do we link up the joints to all these objects or all these objects up to our joints? So what we're going to do is click on that right button right there in the objects panel. And then over here where it says tracking assist, we're going to click match hierarchy. So all you have to do is just select your object and click OK. And all of the joints match up. So it's done in one step. You don't have to do it all manually. It makes it so easy. Um, as, as long as you don't change the name of your bones, uh, everything should be perfect. So then when you're done, you could go and add your materials to each of your objects and you could take that hand mesh and you could turn that into an occluder by clicking that material, then clicking the plus sign here and clicking occluder. And now it's an occluder, but in order to make it an occluder, you'll have to give all these others a material. So we're gonna click on all these materials and I'm just gonna give them, I mean objects, I'm gonna give them a material. I'm going to select, uh, actually, well, let's choose something from here in the asset library. So go into materials in the asset library. I'm going to select gold. And I also really like the iridescence material and the soap bubble. And even the tune material is kind of fun. And even the salmon material is cool too. I mean, all the materials are really great and fun to use. So I'm just gonna select each one and I'm gonna give it a different material. So this one I'll do gold. The cylinder, let's see what that is. That's the ring. I'm going to do iridescence. And then Suzanne, which is that little monkey. I'm going to choose soap bubble. So now you can see it's like a really cool soap bubble material. And now I'm gonna do the others, the tune. So this cloud one is a tune shader. It doesn't look so good, so maybe I might switch it to something else like the gold, which always looks really nice. And then the other one, which is like my little character, I'm gonna switch to soap bubble. So that looks kind of cool. And so, yeah, so that's basically how you use the hand template with your own objects and create your own hand tracking. In fact, you could do anything from create a custom monster hand or robot hand or hand jewelry like this or even nail art. Um, it's just really, it's a versatile template and for me creating stuff on the hand is just as fun as creating accessories for the face. It's just another cool way to express ourselves and it works on both the front and the back camera, which is really cool. So um, I definitely recommend checking out the entire tutorial just to see all the little details in Blender of how to properly set up your um, hand tracking template and all the things that you need to do and, and errors you might run into that along the way because it's really, there's some things that might be a little challenging when you're using Blender. So I don't know if other programs are different. I only use Blender. So um, when I use Blender with this one, it was a little challenging at first, but once I got the hang of it, it's something I could do in just minutes now. So it's a great great tool to use uh, so this is yeah this is the result and you could even select off you just want to choose just one of these materials like a soap bubble you can do that and give everything a soap bubble material and it looks really cool and nice so yeah so that's hand tracking um you can get rid of everything else that's in this file or you could even put that frog hand back and have accessories over a frog hand get rid of that and so now we have like a cool looking frog hand with some jewelry on it so that's my tutorial and I hope you like it. If you guys need any help, you can reach out to me anytime.